strategies. They began back in Survivor Borneo and have progressed over the course of Survivor's history. They began with a simple alliance in the beginning and while that is still utilized to this day, sometimes other strategies have to be implemented to make getting to the end possible and winning happen. This is a continuing series of videos I have been making and I encourage you to watch the others as they display various other strategies that have worked successfully and can still be utilized in a modern season of Survivor. After all, different players require different strategies just depending on the circumstances they find themselves in and today we are going to be looking at the most famous implementation of the Challenge B strategy as used by Tom Westman. And before we start, I want to thank you all for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and and sharing for only a few bucks a month on patreon you can pick what videos i make watch all of this channel's content early chat with other fans of the show and even get exclusive videos every month thank you for your support so with that what is the challenge beast strategy now out of every strategy we have looked at so far this might be the simplest strategy to understand and yet it is the most difficult to pull off now think about this there are only a few ways to guarantee your safety in survivor beginning in season 11 you can of course play a hidden immunity idol for yourself barring no one plays a nullifier on you though that doesn't come until season 37 or you can win the immunity challenge whether it is tribal or individual Tom did this as no one ever previously had and also secured himself the win while many players before him had been challenged beasts and one had actually even won the game Tom is probably the most famous example of a challenge beast so let's briefly look back at the challenge beast that preceded Tom this means players who had won four or or more individual immunity challenges to see what the perception was before Tom redefined it. Back in season one, Survivor Borneo, Kelly Wigglesworth went through a large moral struggle as she debated sticking with her Toggy Alliance or siding with those on Pagong. Every tribal council, it seemed like she would flip flop between who she was voting with all the way up until the very end where she was confronted by Sue Hawk for lying to her and being completely untrustworthy. It was a good thing that she won for back to back to back to back individual immunity challenges to reach the final two where she would go on to lose to Richard in a very narrow four to three vote. The winner of the first survivor competition is Rich. In season two, Survivor the Australian Outback, we see Colby Donaldson go through another moral struggle, though not the same as Kelly's, as he is also in the majority alliance, and while he doesn't need to win the five individual immunity challenges that he does, they do guarantee him a spot in the final two and let him select who his opponent will be at the very end. So he finds himself in this precarious position of picking between Tina, a friend, and someone he has worked side by side with all game, and Keith, someone who isn't generally loved and is a person who Colby inexplicably grows a great distaste for as the game goes along. Now he ends up picking Tina to go to the end against, giving himself a 50-50 shot to win it all in my opinion, instead of the near guaranteed victory he would have had if he had just picked Keith. To this day, the general fan base considers this to be a terrible decision, since he does end up losing to Tina in a 4-3 vote just like Kelly. The winner of Survivor, the Australian Outback. Now we move a few seasons along to season six, Survivor the Amazon. And this is where the flavor of Challenge Beast changes as Jenna Maraska goes well under the radar to win an unneeded immunity in episode eight, since she is in the majority alliance, along with another unneeded immunity win in episode 11, which is only proven when at tribal council, she makes Survivor history by giving her necklace to Heidi and surviving despite receiving two votes. But the final two challenges are when she needs it the most as she is target number one for the men, but she pulls off back-to-back -back wins to ensure that she is at the end and also facing the guy who probably socially struggled the most in the game, and she ends up beating him 6-1, to one, making her the first Challenge Beast winner, though no one ever considers her to be a Challenge Beast. The winner of Survivor, Amazon. <laughs> Season 8 Survivor All-Stars is kind of similar to Colby's story in Season 2 because Boston Rob runs the game top to bottom, wins four individual immunity challenges during the merge that he probably doesn't need to win all of them. But unlike Colby, he doesn't have a moral conundrum to make when picking who he sits next to during the final two, as he is completely in love with Amber, and of course he's gonna pick her if you watch the season and it only makes sense. She does end up beating him in a 4-3 to three vote, but it doesn't matter in the long run, as he does end up marrying her and they are still married to this day with four kids. I love you with all my heart. Will you marry me? 
the winner of Survivor All Stars. So far, we have seen four challenge beasts in the first nine seasons of Survivor, but only one, the unlikeliest of them all to be fair, has actually won the game while the others have all lost by one vote each time due to, well, frankly, a moral decision. I know I said Boston Robs wasn't a moral decision, but it kind of was. It's, it's hard to explain without actually just having watched the season. But in season 10, Survivor Palau, Tom Westman perfects the challenge beast strategy, and while he has a moral conundrum, it does not stand in his way of doing what is best for his game. Tom's challenge prowess begins in the pre-merge as he is a big reason why Karor wins every single immunity challenge and completely wipes Oolong off the face of the map. By the time the merge hits, there are nine people remaining, including himself. One is the last Oolong member, a very easy target for everyone to get out. Two of the Karor members are part of the old minority alliance and have not assimilated to the larger alliance, so once again, easy targets. And the remaining five are probably his only real competition. He does win the first two immunity challenges of the merge and at this point he has only been eligible to be voted out at one tribal council all game, which was the mandatory double tribal council in the pre-merge where everyone voted out the old grumpy guy Willard. So Tom makes his most baffling pitch ever and this is right after he just got done winning two individual immunity challenges about why no one should be targeting him for just being good at challenges. I'm pleading for my life before we even get to that stage of the game. But my strength in the challenge is it's part of what got us to this point. Right. Don't penalize it because I didn't hide it. Right. And nobody has won the million dollars who's been a strong winner of any of those rewards. It's always always somebody time. else. It Guys, was a the, plea. The fact that he's winning it totally, totally makes him a target. Yeah. I know, and he's like, don't make it. No one's ever won because there's, they won. There's, there's a reason why no one's ever won. The first time he is actually eligible to be voted out during the post-merge is when the last remaining Oolong member is the obvious target. So everyone unanimously eliminates her and completely ignores Tom to their detriment. Tom has made good social bonds, but now his head is really on the chopping block as there are no obvious targets left. Thankfully for him and his game, Craig and Jen, two people that are part of his alliance, are actively working with Katie to out him or Ian at the next tribal. So Ian and Tom decide to cut this plan off at the knees and get rid of Greg one tribal before he flips the game on Tom, which is tribal number three Tom is eligible to be voted out at. And it is the last as he goes on to win the remaining three individual immunity challenges and being sure to drag the arguably biggest goat of the game in Katie as part of his alliance to the end, where he puts on a solid final tribal council performance and she falters big time, netting him the win in a massive six to one vote, very similar to Jenna Maraska in terms of the result. The winner of Survivor <laughs> Now, Tom was a pretty big target all game, and impressively, he didn't receive any votes against him at the three tribal councils that he attended where he could have received votes. It was just too late for everyone else as they didn't think he would win five individual immunity challenges. They thought at some point we'll eliminate him in the last few tribal councils. This hadn't happened since Colby Donaldson, and everyone doesn't think of a challenge beast being able to win the game, as you see in that conversation he has with the others of Karor. And as I mentioned earlier, Jenna is not considered a challenge beast, even though on paper she is. Tom had the very fortunate circumstances of his tribe to be able to wipe out Oolong, but he really did make all the right calls and created the necessary social bonds to get the votes at the end of the game. And he has really set the template for how a challenge beast can succeed in this game. Because despite the example he sets, there will be challenge beast after challenge beast that will occur after him that will blow winning it all because they were great in challenges but failed at the other important aspects of Survivor. So while the idea of winning every challenge you can, minimizing how available you are to be voted out sounds easy, it is much harder to do since the challenges vary season by season and so does your competition. Ultimately, a player who is a challenge beast and knows it needs to not forget those important social bonds needed to get voted at the end as this is the downfall of a lot of beasts, but not Tom and not even Jenna. Thanks for watching and if you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me on this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all this possible. So thank you and thank you for watching.